Welcome back to my channel, fellow gardeners. Today, I want to go back and talk about our lovely, lovely canna lilies that we love so much. Now, so many people have been asking me questions about the canna lily. Why is my canna lily not blooming? And I thought today what we could do is just do a comprehensive talk about the canna, talk about the propagation, talk about the blooming and the pruning and about the leaf roller and canna rust. So welcome back, I'm Alice and I'm the Red Soul Gardener. Now, why we love our cannas is that they do give you a long lasting flowering season during the summer. Whereas here in Africa, because we do have this sort of, it is our cold season, but I am getting temperatures of 23 degrees Celsius. But here they do flower all the time. So having a canna lily in your garden in Kenya is you just get color all year round. Now in Europe is in colder climates, it's treated as an annual, but in warmer climate it's treated as a perennial. So also looking after your canna lily, especially during the cold months in cooler temperature uh, countries like in the Northern Hemisphere, is that you need to do your, uh, your overwinter preparation, treat it as an annual, uproot it, and then store it, and then in spring, you bring it out again and plant in your garden. So what is the soil requirement for cannas? As we all know, it does like a well-draining soil. It does have a rhizome as its root. So well-draining soil is actually the best you can give to a canna because all you need is that the water moderately seeps in and retains the moisture in the soil, but then again, is you don't have water sitting around the canna lily rhizome because you will get root rot if it does sit around the roots. So if you do have a clay soil where you do get it really compact, especially after watering, do add in a bit more compost in it so you have some sort of drainage. You could even put peat moss and you could also take some bark, shredded bark, and add it in the soil. So in a way, as you water your canna, especially in summer, is that you do have that drainage working. One of the reasons why um, why cannas don't bloom in the summer, because I've had this, people asking me, is that the canna lily is a very thirsty plant. And especially during the summer months, and now in Europe you're ex uh, experiencing really uh, long heat waves, is if your plant, if your canna, does not get enough water during this period, it'll actually, what it does, it keeps the moisture in its root and it doesn't give it to the flowers. So in the end, you will not get flowers unless you continually water during the dry season. Again, let's go back into soil and water, is that uh, when you are watering your plant, is the mistake we make a lot for a lot of gardeners is that we end up watering the leaf. And then what happens is, as, and you know with all this foliage, is that uh, once you do water the leaf, you do uh, actually have a few drops of water remaining. And that's an invitation again to canna rust. This is when you get fungal infections on your leaves. But at the same time, if you water the soil again, especially during the summer, just go straight into the soil, your canna will be happy because the whole point of watering is to get water into its rise and into its root. Now, what is the light requirement for canna lilies? Canna lilies love full sun. Now, the thing is, is that you can put it here because I don't have any tree cover here. And I have moved my canna uh, lilies around my garden to find the ideal spot. And I will show you what I did, I planted a canna, a whole load of cannas in my happy place, 
only to discover that the bush is started getting bushier. And if you don't get enough sun or light to your canners, they end up getting very tall and scraggy and they do fall and they won't flower. So the trick to get them to bloom is have full sun. They can tolerate partial shade, but full sun will give you your miracles. Here I'm standing and this is one of my favorite, favorite canna and it flowers yellow. And then the beautiful thing about the leaves, they're all variegated and they do have yellow stripes. I love this canna and it just surprised me. Now, one of the tricks I learned about canna is that every four to five years, do separate the plant. Now what happens is that we've done an episode on cannas where I did uproot some of my cannas to show you exactly what a risin looks like. And this is the canna risin. So once you do uproot your plant is you look for the eye and the eye is simply that where you're going to get your shoots from. And when you do plant your, your canna risin, do have spacing and do plant your risin facing upwards because as it gets into the soil, what happens, this is where you'll get your shooting. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, which is a cooler climate, as soon as your autumn, the last, just before the last freeze, is when you do uproot your risin. And this is a perfect time for you to actually to divide your risin. So I would actually t uproot my plants before the first frost. And as you're cleaning your, your uh, risin for your overwinter storage, is take this opportunity to cut it into pieces. And this could be your propagation for the next season. So other than being uh, doing, uh, treating the canna as an annual, like in the colder uh, regions, here in Africa, we're in warmer regions. What we do is we simply uproot it and we, we, uh, we do cut them, separate and use this time to actually separate the risin. Now, why I think it is important to separate the risin occasionally is the risin moves horizontally just like that. So as this matures, another piece will follow. Now what happens is that when you do put your canna lilies in clumps as we do here or along your borders, as it matures, the risin does expand and then you find that you will get more shooting and those little babies, as they try to come up, they, there'll be far too much foliage, so they'll never get a chance to actually go for the sunlight. So division is really good in order to spread your canners and at the same time to allow more blooms because you're allowing these little shoots to actually get the sun and in summer get the blooms. Now, when we look at colder climates, how do you do your overwinter storage, uh, storage? Because the problem is, is that if your risin is wet, still wet, is that you will get a fungal infection, you will get rot happening while you're doing your overwinter storage. So we have done an episode on overwinter for the canners. So basically, as I say, a quick fast forward, you divide your risin, clean out the soil and make sure that your risin is good. I would take this time to look and see and cut off those unhealthy parts in your risin and then when you do cut those unhealthy parts out, uh, from your risin and then take this time to actually leave it out in the open for at least a week so your risin is completely dry. What you could do in order to also save your risin or if there are any pests is actually just do a fungal spray on it so you know for those months that you have kept them in your greenhouse or in your garage for storage you know that you won't actually invite fungal or other sort of pest diseases. 
so as soon as in the northern hemisphere, as soon as spring does come and you start seeing that your horizon is actually starting to get new shoots, bring it out of your garage and start your propagation. You could either grow it in containers or you decide if you want it on borders. But also location is very, very important. Make sure when you do lock for a uh, location for your canna that it does have full sun or partial shade. Now the other thing is that if you are now going to plant it in the ground go at least two to three inches under the ground because sometimes you do get a problem with blooming if it's too far in the soil and then the summer starts and you, uh, and you want your blooms sometimes you've buried it too, too deep that in the end it, it won't bloom. Now I need to show you something is that why the sun is very important is that we will go into my happy place and see how important location is. Now for canna lilies, canna lilies uh, location is very important. Now this is my happy place and I think we've done an episode on it but then from having it full of salvias I decided I want my air plants and my orchids in this area and one of my fascinations was actually to grow my canna lilies here. Now at that particular time my hibiscus and all these vegetation was actually quite small now what happens is is that it's got bushier so it doesn't even get uh, full sun nor does it get partial sun uh, it's not in partial shade and this is what happens to your canna lily when you do plant it in the wrong location as it grows taller and skinnier looking for the sun at one point it just falls so location is very very important for cannas because what happens this whole patch has really scraggy looking cannas of which I will uproot and put it in a full sun situation. So another thing about location again, this is where in my backyard, this is where I had all my canna lilies. And the problem is, is that the canna lilies I had, as we've seen at the ones at the back, with the tall variety and I never really realized. So what I had done just to get the color, I had planted them all along the wall until I realized when we did the episode on the canna rust is that they had been sitting there for over six years. And so the baby shoots were trying to make it up. And so I wasn't getting that many flowers because it was impossible, there was too much foliage. Now the other thing what I noticed, because as we mentioned earlier, the canna rising does grow quite fast and it does love growing in clumps. I had so many clumps of cannas that in the end what I was doing is as it produces its foliage and I wasn't paying attention thinking that it's great to have an abundance of canna, I realized I had canna rust and we've done an episode on that and that's when the foliage is really thick it's after the rains where there is a lot of moisture in the air and because there's no circulation around the canna and I had been watering just the leaves is that's when I got the fungal disease and check that episode out it's got the solutions on how to get rid of canna rust. So what I did with those cannas in my backyard, I decided I needed full sun and I needed that height because the height was good. It's only that those ones were going under the roof and I couldn't see some flowers. So here in my, uh, at my wall, I planted all the cannas along, which was great because of their full foliage. It does, ha it does hide the, the concrete wall but at the same time, they're free to do what they want to do up there and they're happy. So once your canna does flower, is at the end of the flowering, you get it going into seed production. And basically you get pods like this that form and within the pod, they would be first of all green. And as the pod dries, it starts turning color and eventually black. 
Now what you do is that when you do get this, is just open up the pod. Unfortunately, this one hasn't dried, but all the seeds are actually in there. So once your seed pod does turn black and dries up, all these little baby seeds here do turn black. But the thing about the canna seeds is the seed coat is actually quite tough. Now, if you want to do a seed propagation, you can do a seed pro propagation. But in order to soften the seed pod, what you need to do is collect your black seed pod, put it in lukewarm water for at least, let's say, 24 hours, 48 hours until they soften up. And then that's what you will use to sow. Now, the other method what people do use is you get your, dark, your black seed pod and file them down until you get to the white matter which is inside the seed coat and that is you file it down and uh, the seed coat down and then when you do come to the white uh, flesh in in the seed pot is you plant it you stop and that's what you plant and in the end you will get your uh, can of babies now the other question a lot of people are asking me is that do you prune your um, your, ba your flower, you know, your spent flower, do you prune it? Now, the thing is, is that you have to know where exactly to prune. Yes, I do prune them, but sometimes because my sunbirds do come and take a dip in the petals, is I just leave my petals to slowly wilt and fall off. But if you want to know where you need to prune, is basically if we take this flower, is what happens is that is the stem but the babies actually will start at the side you'll see the sheath here so if i was to prune i would actually remove that one and that one will start flowering that's the exact position but on the other hand is <laughs> I do love these flowers so I do like them to sort of slowly wilt on the plant. The last thing I'd like to tell you is as we know the foliage and in order to give those babies underneath those baby rhizomes, the shoots access to the sunlight do go in and remove your big leaves like this and what I've done here is I've removed them because I have my little garden here but as you remove it those little baby shoots will have the courage to go and look for the sun and then they will give you more blooms so thank you so much I hope I've answered all your questions and do write to me if you do actually have other queries but I think we've covered everything about our darling canna lily which we love and don't forget to like, to share, subscribe to my channel and also press the notification button. And do, uh, do introduce this to your friends. And this is in Europe at the moment, this is canna lily blooming season. So do enjoy your canna lilies always. And don't forget to write to me, I do answer. I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, and also write to me on the YouTube channel. So thank you, thank you so much, and look after your beautiful cannas. Have a lovely day.